Today we're going to look at recovering uh, the Grub2 bootloader. So let's say for one reason or another you've lost it. Maybe you, you know, installed Windows XP Professional after Linux, or you installed Windows 7 afterwards, or maybe you had to reinstall Windows 7 or XP or Vista, or maybe you did something that modified the master boot record, or it was damaged in some way, and so now you can't access Grub2 for one reason or another. The way to fix it, um, all you need is your Ubuntu Live CD. So you can download the ISO from Ubuntu.com. Um, and you can use the CD. Well, one of my favorite methods is uh, I do everything on a flash drive. And if you go to pendrivelinux.com, uh, there are lots of tools you can use to create multi-boot flash drives. And I, you know, I have a 32 gigabyte flash drive. and um, I have images of Ubuntu and images of Windows 7 and XP on it, as well as like password recovery tools and disk partitioning and, and, and clonezilla tools and things like that. So lots of wonderful free tools. I'll put in a plug for that website. But anyway, whether you ch choose to use a, a live CD or a flash drive, put that in and boot up off of that. And you know, you'll see the default Ubuntu install screen, so you can either try Ubuntu without installing if you want to boot up off the, in the live CD mode. Um, and you know, it doesn't matter if, if you set up the flash drive, you can you know, do like a, a Casper file and make it persistent. Um, I, I do that that way I can install things on my flash drive and you know boot up on other people's computers and have all of my software and things but well, whatever you decide you, you don't really need all those fancy tools for this you just want to be able to boot up off the live CD so rather than install Ubuntu I'm just going to say try Ubuntu without installing and I'll boot up into that live CD mode. Good grief that was really chatty wasn't it? I've had lots of coffee this morning and I'm feeling really talkative it's a beautiful day. It's the wonderful month of December. Happy holidays. So we're booting up here. Maybe I'll kind of cut out and come back in to save some time on this video. So now I've booted at my default um, you know, Ubuntu live installation screen. And what I'll need to do um, is look at my local file system. And you know everything here is, is on the image itself. It's not actually on my hard drive. So if I were to try to install Grub at this point, um, you know it would try to do it on the live image, and that's not what we will, what we want. What we want to do is do it on the hard drive. So the first thing I need to do is figure out where my Linux partitions are on the hard drive. And of course, we'll need some root privileges, and we can use the fdisk command with the dash L option. Oops, dash L, not equals L. Okay, and then notice here's my file system. So right here, this HFS, this is my um, my Leopard partition for Snow Leopard, my little Hackintosh. And then these two partitions here, NTFS, it's a system and an operating system partition for Windows 7. And then down here, I have you know an extended and some logical drives. And in this case here is, is my native Linux partition. This is where actually you know, my Ubuntu 10.10 Maverick Meerkat is installed. And this, of course, is my swap partition. So I'm only interested in the Type 83, the Linux. And really all I'm interested in knowing is what's the partition number. So I know it's the fifth partition. And by the way, this changed from Grub Legacy to, to Grub 2. In Grub Legacy, these would have been indexed, you know, you'd start at 0. And so that would actually have been 4. But in Grub 2, they start at 1. So in this case, that's SDA 5. Now the devices themselves start at zero, but the partitions will start at one this time. So my fifth partition, SDA5, and I, I just need to know this information right here. And, you know, is that large enough? Maybe I can zoom in a little bit, and that will be bigger. How's that? Is that bigger? Okay. So now that I know that, I have that useful piece of information, I need to mount that. I, again, if I look at my mounted file system, it's deceptive because if I were to go, let's say I were to go to root here. Okay, I'm going to clear the screen, and if I were to look at root, okay, it looks like, it might look like I'm on my hard drive, but I'm not. This is the actual root of the embedded, you know, the image that I booted up off of, the ISO on my flash drive. Or if you use the Ubuntu Live CD, the, the image on the CD itself. So this is, it's a read-only copy. Um, you know, I can't write to it, and I don't want to write to it. I, I want to reinstall Grub on my hard drive, on my system, not on the Live CD itself, even if I could, which I can't, but... So what I need to do is I need to mount some things from that hard drive using the mount command. 
And so remember, I know that it's FD5, so I'm going to go sudo, and I'm going to use the mount command. Um, and the first thing I want to do is I need to mount DEV SDA5. That's the actual device where my, you know, that's the partition where my Linux is installed. And I'm going to mount it to the mount folder itself. All right, and remember when you do that, I'll, I'll use the mount command just to show you what that looks like now. So see now, even though I'm booted, I booted up off of my flash drive off the live CD image, um, I've taken the partition on my hard drive, the fifth one that Linux has installed on the Type 83, and I've mounted it to the mount folder as read-writable, ext4. So now I can actually have some effect on it or do something to it. So that was the first step. Um, you know, again, I mounted the dev SDA5 to mount. And now the next thing I want to do, again, in the ser several mount commands we need to issue here so that we can take our hard drive file system and affect it by the live CD image or by typing commands in this image. So with that mounted, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to mount um, the same one, DVSDA5, and I'm going to go to mount boot, okay, in this case. And next I'm going to do sudo mount. And the next command, I'm going to do sudo mount and bind. And in this, this case, um, the device folder. And I'm going to take and, and put that into mount dev. Okay. All right, so sudo mount bind dev mount dev. And then I'm going to use the chroot command. And we talked about this before when creating a chroot shell. But remember, chroot temporarily changes the root of the file system. I'm at root now if I print working directory. But I'm going to temporarily change root, relatively speaking, to another directory with the chroot command. And of course, I'll need root privileges for that. A lot of root going on here. So sudo chroot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily make the folder of the live image mount root. You know, for all intents and purposes. So now it looks like I'm in root. You know, if I print the working directory, but really I'm in you know root forward slash mount on the live image. And if I do that, remember I mounted all those things to that folder. So look at all of these these folders here. Now I now I can actually affect in this folder. This is actually my hard drive. I've mounted the images of my hard drive into this folder. So. Now I'm no longer looking at the root of the live image. Now I'm looking at the root of my hard drive and partition 5, my Type 83 Linux EXT4 partition. Okay? Okay. So let's go ahead and, you know, the command we can do now is um, we want to do sudo and grub install. And so I'm just going to do grub install. And I'm going to use um, dev SDA because I only have, this is a laptop system here, and I only have one hard drive. Um, if you had more than one, you know, it might be SDB or STC or whatever it was, but we know from using FDisk it was SDA. The partition doesn't matter. All you want is the hard drive. So I don't need to do like SDA5 or 4 or 3 or anything, even though SDA5 is my partition. I just need the device, SDA. Okay, and there goes my cuckoo clock. Um, so sudo grub install dev sda because I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and reinstall. Installation finished. No error reported. Yay! Um, in this case, now I'm, you know, again, if I were to print my working directory, it tells me I'm at the root level. But remember we use ch root. So I want to get out of that. I'm just going to type exit and I will leave that. Okay, and now if I print my working directory, I'm at root, but I'm looking at the root of the image itself per se. This is the live image and no longer the root part of, you know, of my hard drive, what I've mounted. And I need to unmount things accordingly. I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, reboot yet without cleanly unmounting all the things that I mounted. Otherwise, I'd have to end up running FFCK and that would just... Wouldn't necessarily ruin my day, but it could complicate things before I reboot. So I just want to unmount what I mounted. 
And in order to do that, I'll use the you know umount command. Of course, I'll need some root privileges. And I'm going to sudo umount, and I'm just going to do mount dev, and that'll unmount mount dev, and from the mount folder, a lot of mounting going on. And the next one I want to do, let me do mount boot, and I'll unmount that from the mount folder. And then the next one I want to do, um, I'm going to unmount uh, the mount folder itself, so to speak. Okay, and I've unmounted all those things, and now I can actually reboot from my live CD. So I'm going to do sudo reboot and pull my flash drive out. Or if you didn't use a flash drive, um, you know, pull out your Ubuntu Live CD and get ready to go back to using your Grub2 on your hard drive. Okay, and we've rebooted, and now here's our Grub2 menu fully restored. And again, on our triple boot system, um, our inexpensive, you know, little Toshiba satellite Hackintosh. We have Ubuntu 1010, and we have uh, Snow Leopard, and we have Windows 7.